What's up, everybody? This is a talky video today. We're gonna be we're gonna be chatting a bit about a subject that came up in in stream the day and made me chuckle. And I was like, you know what? I, I totally need to do that. Which is, I feel like I'd already talked about it because I've been playing and streaming for so long with Baldur's Gate three, but I had never actually done a video about it. Which is, what is the launch party that I'm taking through the game? Why am I taking that launch party? Why are those characters coming with me? And I've I've talked about this in videos and live streams and stuff, but I'd never done a video. So. That's what this is this morning, and I my my finger is it's mostly back. I can't quite squeeze it all the way, everybody, but uh, that finger sprain is mostly worn off now. It's just residual pain when I try to do a tight bend, which is awesome because I can I can drink my coffee a normal <laughs> normal way again. So I am going to be going with the base characters that you get at the beginning of the game: Lazale, Gale and Shadowheart. Um, I am going to be romancing Shadowheart the first time through the game. Now, there's a reason why I've chosen these. They complement what I want to play as a class, and they are early characters in the game. Now, I tend to do this with every game I play. Like, the first time I did Baldur's Gate, it was, you know, Jahira and Khalid and... Um, Minsk, and I think we did the the cleric. If I remember correctly, it was the cleric from the from the um, the tents, the carnival, right? Neshkol Carnival is that what it was called? Um, anyway, um, and that was the party that I went through the game with. And then the second time, I remember Ari in Baldur's Gate 2. Ari was such a staple character for me. I romanced her the first time through the game, and then I loved her storyline so much that I literally used her in my party like for the next four or five playthroughs of Baldur's Gate 2. Um, I really enjoyed the Shadowheart story we've seen in Early Access, and that's why I wanted to definitely use her as a romance option, but definitely bring her through the whole thing, because she's got the artifact. Like, the fact that she has the artifact, to me, is she has to go through the play, first playthrough. I have to see that to completion. Like, how can I, you know, I'm a, I'm a writer, I'm an author, I've been doing this a long time, making a living with words, and that is a storyline that must have, I must see the completion of. It's like, I can't just pick up a book, read two chapters, and not read the whole book. Like, I need, I need to know, like, what comes next, everybody. So, uh, Shadowheart, for sure, is, is, is going to be in my first party playthrough. Which means I don't need a cleric, because she provides cleric duties, so I don't have to worry about that, which is great. Um, but it also very much complements what I'm going to be playing on my first playthrough, which we'll save for the last, because you got to watch the whole video to find out if you didn't already know. Um, the next one for me is Gale. Um, I like wizards. One of my playthroughs will definitely be sorcerer or wizard, one of the two. I'm, I'm not, like 90% sure it's drow sorcerer because that's what I really enjoyed the most in my playthroughs uh, with magic stuff. Um, that sorcerer was really awesome in early access, so I may do a sorcerer. But anyway, I like casters. Every time I play a CRPG, my second or third playthrough always is a caster. Wizard... Um, usually a wizard. It's pretty much always been wizards. <laughs> However, uh, in early access, um, I played a sorcerer for the first time, and it was like, wow, this is really cool, you know? It doesn't quite have the spell versatility of, as the wizard, but you get much more potent abilities. But, I like wizards. Gale is an awesome character. Um, I love Gale's outlook on everything. The writing for Gale is, the writing for all of the characters is amazing, but the writing for Gale is is intriguing, sarcastic. I mean, he feels like a, a, a Han Solo wizard to me, you know, like, like he's got that sardonic attitude, but also a deeply ingrained passion for magic, and and so much so that he, you know, fell in love with Mistra, the goddess of magic, you know, so like his story, and, and like the the I have to have a rare item. I have to consume a rare item with potent magic once every once in a while, or otherwise I'm gonna there's gonna be earth altering, you know, Faerun altering um, consequences. Like I could destroy the world if if I don't eat a magic item. Like I need to know that story to its conclusion. So Gale is coming along in the party because um, I need a wizard, and he has a really cool backstory, and I like his character arc and. 
the voice acting and everything for Gale. Some of the stuff you run into with him at the camp, just in early access, like when you learn to cast magic, even if you're not a magic user, if you make the rolls, you can cast magic with Gale at your camp, and it's a deeply intimate moment between your two characters from a storytelling perspective and you get to see who gale really is like magic is everything to him um the conjuration of mistress image that scene um he's got some anecdotes like that one time at the tavern when this happened and i bought everybody a drink and all this happened it's like this dude's been around a while and he's seen some stuff i love it um and lazale um now lazale felt off to me at the very beginning i didn't think i was going to go through the game with her but i need a tank and i know that you can respec i know i i'm not i'm probably never going to use the respec option i'm also probably never going to multi-class and the reason for that is i believe and this is a personal belief my own belief no one else out there has to agree with me you you are free to play this game however you want and i want you to do that i'm not judging anyone for their decisions my personal feelings are the way that i enjoy it is i don't like to multi-class because i just like to focus on a single class identity and i don't i don't i'm never going to respect my companions um they are who they are they were written the way they are written um, and I'm going to consume them and use them and consume in a way that I mean, like if I could, I consume a movie, I consume a book. Um, um, I'm going to enjoy them the way that they were created in and exactly the way they were created so I can get the, the maximum amount of interactions out of them and preserve that identity that's been written into the character. Um, if you, if you go off and start Re respecting them they've talked about how you'll lose conversation stuff and some core elements of the story are tied to their class and so that stuff becomes no longer relevant and i don't i don't i don't personally want that i want them to be the way they were written um anyway um lazale grew on me even though hang on guys my phone's beeping at me even though um in the beginning i was like i can't take her She's an evil character. Like I was like, I'm a chaotic good character. Like I, you know, I don't want to take um, her through because, you know, I don't want to. I don't want an evil Githyanki in my party. But <laughs> I say, but I, I hang on a minute. Lazale, and I'll tell you what. This is the power of good writing and good voice acting. Because over time, I have come to sympathize with Lazale and really, really, I want to help her become who she wants to be. But I also want to be able to be there to help guide her like to being a more tempered version of a Githyanki warrior, right? Like, she has within her all that burning rage and desire to be the best that she can be um, and you know get the red dragon and get the silver sword and all these things for the glory of her queen but her you've already seen her be influenced by your party um, by your actions and particular by the main character's actions she's become tempered by that and i love the fact that these characters storylines change based on your interactions and and the way they re interact with you, the trust they have in you unlocks or distrust goes the opposite way. There's all these permutations that are based on so many different factors, which leads to these whatever 17,000 endings or whatever they've talked about. Um, all that stuff is fascinating to me, and, and nowhere is it better represented, I feel, than with Lazale's character right here. I can't turn my thumb all that way. Um I love her character, and it didn't start out that way. It was definitely something that grew on me with time. And I think that for me, I can't wait to see her get her, all of her, achieve all of her objectives, but also realize how much of her own stuff is based on really twisted <laughs> beliefs. And as she spends more time in Faerun amongst the normals, amongst the normies, right? I think you'll start to see her become a very, uh, very different 
Githyanki than the rest of her race, uh, which is really cool to think about. Um, um, just because we've never got, I mean, they've all they've only ever been the enemy. Like Baldur's Gate 2, that's a terrifying place to have to go to in the game when you get to that point. It's definitely one of the higher level parts of that game, dealing and going going to where the Githyanki are. It's, it's it's quite dangerous. It's very dangerous in the Underdark 2 when you meet the Mind Flayers. It's there's some really cool stuff in Baldur's Gate 2, and they've got that here, which is really really awesome from what I've seen so far in early access. Um, what can I say about the other companions? So, I will probably never take... Well, I can't say never. Um, the first few playthroughs... The first playthrough is going to be, like I just said, uh, let's talk about my class really quick, and then we'll get on to the... I've got some more thoughts. I'm already 12 minutes in. This is going to be a longer video this morning, everybody. Um, I'm going to be playing a Wood Elf Druid amongst this mix for my first playthrough. Now, I... I I said a few couple months ago, I said I was going to do a forest gnome druid. Anybody who watched my playthrough of that testing it, I love the I, I love the RP ID, the role playing idea idea behind that. But I could not get past being a short race. I just couldn't. Um, there was something that threw me off every single time because my character is constantly staring up at every single person he has an interaction with. In <laughs> conversations and I just couldn't I couldn't uh, I couldn't handle it after a while I don't know if it's something to do with the animations or just the way my forest gnome's beard looked it could have been that I mean there were there was I just couldn't put a finger on it but it just never felt right to me so I'm going to go back to my tried and true wood elf and somebody asked during the stream yesterday is that a personal preference or a stat based preference and I will say it's both I've all, if anybody who's been around my channel for any length of time knows, I pretty much always go elf, elf ranger, elf rogue. Those are like my, the elf rogue is like always my first playthrough. Um, it sometimes will be a halfling, but most of the time it's an elf. Dragon's Gate Origins, you know, elf. Uh, Pillars of Eternity, elf. Pillars of Eternity 2, elf. Um, <laughs> maybe the second or third playthrough will be a halfling, but first one's uh, Guild Wars 2, elf. Um, World of Warcraft Elf, uh, EverQuest 2 Elf. Um, yeah, I, I always do Elves. My very first EQ character was actually uh, an Elven, a Wood Elf Ranger. Like, I just like Wood Elves. Um, but in 5th edition, and, and also other editions, but, but specifically in 5th edition, Wood Elves get some really cool racial passives that complement the Druid. Um... It's not so much the stat bonus as it is the fact that I get to use innately swords and bows. So the bow is the most important thing for me here because even though I'm not ever going to be like a master of a bow, the ability to do a ranged shot as a druid... What's up, everybody? Quick commercial break here to give a shout out to our guild champions, who are the highest tier memberships here on YouTube. Ancient Entity, Assassin Gamer 94, Bubblonia Rising, Crazy's Relative, Mujin, and Remedy. Thanks so much for the highest tier membership. And thanks to all of the members who support the channel, because you keep me doing this full time. You too can become a supporter if you're new here. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that bell icon so you never miss an update. Join as a member. There's three different tiers. We do lots of special stuff, private polls, private videos you get a shout out if you're the highest tier membership but you can also do one-off uh, donations in the form of super chats on any live stream or premiere you see and of course super thanks on any upload or youtube short whatever you can contribute it's great keeps me on the air full time keeps the cats fed keeps the homestead running anyway back to the video everybody is awesome because that means if i'm ever short on you know spells and I don't have range with a cantrip or something, then I can use my bow, and that's a that's a big deal to at least be able to you know pew pew a little bit in fights if you absolutely need to as a last resort. Um, and having a quarter staff, I like the idea of a quarter staff. I don't want to use like a, a scimitar and a shield or a you know whatever. I am an elven druid with a big ass staff or some sort of a stick, you know, like a like does, no, I don't mean like big fat but i mean just like a gandalf style staff like he needs to have a staff of nature uh, you know so i'm going to be going with some sort of two-handed staff um so there is role play here but there's also you know 
some stuff like the the ability to use a bow as a wood elf that is kind of important um so both of those for me i don't really care about the stat stuff because i will eventually get stats how i want the stats to be so i'm not really worried about stats um so yeah that's that's my initial group i like the druid um i'm playing the circle of the moon druid which is um the shapeshifter and it played really well i really enjoyed it so much so that i'm i i this is the first game I've ever made the decision on to not play a rogue my first time through. I'm playing a druid my first time through. That should show you how special Baldur's Gate 3 is, everybody. It got me to to break my rogue habit because the druid was so damn fun. And I'll tell you what, the bard, the bard is also so damn fun. And I'm thankful that I'm going to be able to play a bard in my multi in my uh, multi multiplayer group because the bard is so fun as well. Anyway. Let me not get distracted, because there's more companions to talk about here. Because um, even though that's my first playthrough, let's talk about my second playthrough and beyond. And then I'll shut up, because I need more coffee. And that's important. Um, the second playthrough is going to be, I believe, a drow sorcerer. And I definitely want to take um, Karlak through the game. And I will r be doing the romance option with her. Um, and I will also take Lazale. And probably Shadowheart again, but that will be a more, a more. I don't want to say evil, but it's definitely going to be like more of a chaotic neutral group where they're going to do chaotic things. They're fairly neutral. That they're not really evil, but they're not really good either. It's like sort of a self-focused um, group that's just kind of like we're going to get what we want out of these things. Let's not worry about saving everyone. Let's just get through this together and get powerful together it's going to be more of a mercenary group um so definitely more neutral and leaning towards the chaotic in terms of um their alignments that so that'll be that group and so it'll be a a, a sorcerer plus whatever karlak is which i'm assuming is some sort of a fighter thief character i don't know maybe they've said and i haven't read they probably have said and i just don't remember that has it's absolutely possible, folks. <laughs> um, Asterian, I don't know when I will ever, ever take Asterian. I should, because he sounds like a fun character, and I've heard lots of good things about him. I've tested him a little bit, but I've just never been compelled to take him because of the fact that I know I'll be playing a rogue. And going back to what I talked about at the beginning, I don't like to change people's class. It'll be difficult for me to figure out when to fit Asterian into the group. Um, it will probably be on a playthrough where I do like evil which will happen way down the line because i generally don't do evil playthroughs until like the sixth seventh somewhere somewhere after i've done you know five or six playthroughs of a game um is when i'll get to the evil stuff just for pure experimentation purposes so i don't know about him ever and i will i have no idea at this point because they've recast will done new voiceovers i know nothing about will's story now so it's like I, I can't give an opinion on will because we just don't know until we've played the game you're also getting jahira Minsk and Halson, and we don't know anything about their storylines either, and they can all be romanced. So even though they're not like origin characters, they're still integral party members who have their own storylines and relationships and romances and everything else. So I mean, it's there's a lot we just don't know yet in terms of what am I going to take on my third playthrough? Well, it might be Minsk and Jahira. I might do a nostalgia run and and bring Minsk and Jahira along with me for the ride. Um, I just don't know yet beyond the first couple because there's so many variables still. So, uh, like, subscribe, hit the bell icon, everybody. We are streaming daily from 11 a.m. Central. We're doing a lot of BG3 right now, but we will eventually be doing Starfield and uh, Cyberpunk Phantom Menace. So expect to see lots of that content interwoven into the channel here, as well as our ongoing podcasts on Monday and Thursday, and of course, all of the film reviews, TV reviews, and everything else we do. Check out the Discord, all the other playlists. Thanks for subscribing, those of you who do. Thanks to those of you who support with memberships. Super chat if you can. See everybody in the next one. Peace.